Oh, it's time to talk Dallas Cowboys football. Our lads, football network, prime sports network. Check out both YouTube channels. Of course, we have the new Our Lads football channel. So you want to catch that for sure. Uh, we're building that. It's a great time of year to build a new channel too with the NFL draft coming up in just a few months. There's only four teams that could care less about the NFL draft right now. Uh, but 28 teams are already looking that way. Uh, some teams have already decided who their head coaches are. And they don't have any of that stuff to worry about except personnel. And that, one of those teams, the Dallas Cowboys. So we're going to talk Dallas Cowboys football with R.J. Ochoa, the editor-in-chief of Blogging the Boys. Back after uh, his uh, intro appearance, uh, I believe, uh, right around August, September of this, uh, this past year. Went by fast, R.J. How's it going? Thanks for doing this. Thanks for having me, Greg. Uh, always too fast, um, you know, especially when, when you're putting the Christmas tree away, you can kind of start to feel the NFL season slipping through your fingers. And whatever pitchers and catchers report in three weeks, I guess we'll, we'll have that to get us through a couple of months. Yeah, that's true. Um, now, some teams, see, uh, as, a, uh, as a long, now suffering Jet fan, it's been going on for just far too long. Uh, the one thing I try to do to alleviate uh, a lot of the uh, angst and uh, depression is, um, hey, you know what? Uh, all those other teams that had great seasons. They're sitting home, too. So, uh, And that's really the bottom line because in the NFL, as we saw with the Houston Texans, really nowadays, if, as long as you have s s some underlying structure and you've got some talent – and if you have a really good offseason, things can change dramatically. And I know the Cowboys were already at a level where everybody knows that they're Super Bowl capable as far as talent. Um, but it's about getting over the hump and making that next move. And what exactly do you think that might be? Is there a missing ingredient that if you had to just pinpoint and say, yeah, consensus wise, this is what the fan base believes is holding them back? I certainly don't mean to dodge the question, but it's really difficult to feel like that's the case, right? I mean, I get your point. You know, a lot of teams go into an offseason and say, you know, we're a quarterback way. It's generally a pretty obvious one, right? Or, you know, this this quarterback needs a, a star, bona fide, you know, playmaking wide receiver, and then the offense really takes off. Or this team needs, you know, defensive help or whatever the case may be. I mean, you know, the Cowboys had – arguably the best quarterback in the NFL in terms of the seasons they produced. I mean, you, you could make that argument. Um, they had, you know, arguably the best, you know, wide receiver in the NFL in CD Lamb. You could certainly make that argument, I think, a, a little bit more strongly. They had one of the more aggressive play callers in the NFL from an offensive standpoint. They had one of the most efficient offenses, uh, basically from the San Francisco loss in week five on. And you got to count the whole season. But I don't think anybody who, who watched the Cowboys doubted their abilities. They had an impenetrable home field advantage, right? It's not like, you know, they've, they've had years in the past where it's like, you just got to take care of games at home. They benefited from luck. I mean, injury luck and turnover luck, and regression to the mean luck, both positively <laughs> and, and negatively. Um, the, the big bad wolf in the division, the Philadelphia Eagles, floundered and fell apart. So it wasn't even, you know, a year ago, you could have made the argument like, well, you know, they just were in a division where the Eagles had this, you know, one of one, the, the you know, 100 percentile sort of season. Um, they they literally had a cornerback break the record for most pick sixes in an <laughs> NFL season. Yeah. I mean, you know, they had they had all of these things happen to them um, and, and they failed. And so it's really difficult to say, like, what what more could could you possibly have asked for? What what other break did you need that you didn't already get? And. And, you know, I'd say the kind of general sentiment of the fan base right now is dejection and frustration and, you know, kind of call it what you want under those umbrellas. And, and it's for those reasons. It feels like, man, you, you had everything you could possibly want and it still wasn't enough. So, you know, conventional wisdom suggests there will be some regression in, in the ways that were positive for them. And, you know, that's going to make things all the more difficult for them in 2024. All right. So uh, sometimes when you build a team and you have all that talent, you have to start looking at other w ways and reasons. And sometimes it it could be uh, it could be uh, emotional. It could be um, you know do, do does the team can they handle the pressure in Dallas? Uh, uh, are they are they are they leaders? Uh, all that kind of uh, stuff, inner stuff that I think you, you, you have to talk about when, when you believe you've got that much talent. 
So do you think, from what you've seen, do you think that the locker room, do you think it's a strong enough championship type of locker room, or are they missing, is that maybe what they're missing? They're missing a couple of guys. It may not be superstars, but maybe glue guys, guys that really need to help push this team over the top when it really matters the most. I thought the Cowboys, and I know we had spoken about this, did a great job of identifying a need for kind of big brothers or mentors or for players who, who had done some serious things in the NFL. And they got those last year in the acquisitions of Stephon Gilmore and Brandon Cooks. I mean, you know, Gilmore's resume, obviously, is incredible. Um, and so, again, you know, you had that. And, <laughs> yeah. Um, and I do believe they're an incredibly tight locker room. I, I do believe that. I think... If there's anything that, you know, there is this, you know, kind of glass ceiling on them, so to speak. Um, And I think, you know, I think the Jets probably deal with this in their own way because of the market. And, and it's you know, it's a little bit different, obviously, for the Cowboys because of of who they are. But, I mean, they're they're fighting a a drought that is over 10,000 days long. I mean, you know, this is a really heavy shadow that they are living in and you know they get all sorts of attention and and that's just the way it goes and and they they all benefit from that in certain ways i don't you know there's there's give and take but um they're they're fighting ghosts i mean and you know mike mccarthy has done i think an impressive job of handling that subject in his um, postseason press conference he was specifically asked about you know responsibility with regards to the drought and he said, look, we don't we don't take any responsibility for that. You know, we take responsibility for what we've been here for and, you know, the failures that we've had. But, you know, it isn't Mike McCarthy's fault that Jason Garrett was a failure or that Bill Parcells couldn't get it done or yes. whatever. Um, but but that's not the way, you know, Cowboys fans feel. I mean, to Cowboys fans, it's it's all this, it's all cut the same. And so um, but it's in. I didn't used to buy into the fact that this was a thing that, that is kind of hovering over them. But, you know, it's so difficult to win a Super Bowl in general. But when sure. you are kind of, you know, living in this, this you know, this desert, it, it does kind of, I think, add to the frustration. And it, it makes the danger of failing and falling short feel all the more intense. And so that's where you can you can kind of lose focus for, you know, a quarter and a half and find yourself down 27 nothing in a winner go home game against the Green Bay Packers. And that's what happened. Well, uh, as we said at the very top, uh, it's all about trying to build in the offseason uh, personnel-wise. Uh, Dallas, as you mentioned with McCarthy, does not have to worry about coaching. Is there, by the way, well, I should say, you know, not necessarily head coaching, but um, what changes are going to be made? Uh, what major changes, if any, are being made as far as the coaching staff? I certainly don't want to date this episode, but it, it all – I think the first domino to fall is what does or does not happen with Dan Quinn if, if he gets a head coaching job. Um, obviously, the Cowboys will have to fill that void. Um, and if he does leave, he would likely take some you know, of the defensive staff with him, and so yep. you've got to kind of fill those things out. Um, you know, Dan Quinn has gotten a lot of positive attention and reviews for his time as the Cowboys defensive coordinator, but I would say the second half of the season really soured people on him. Um, you know, the Cowboys played against the Seahawks, incidentally, on that Thursday night game where Dak Prescott looked like he might have taken a hold on the MVP. Uh, and he did so because Dan Quinn's defense didn't force a single punt uh, against Geno Smith. And it was really embarrassing. And then they got worked by the Buffalo Bills. They let the Dolphins drive down the field and get a game winning field goal against them. Um, they went complete in total soft prevent mode against the Lions and forced us to have to live with the two point conversion conversation for an entire week. Um, and then obviously, you know, folded in cataclysmic fashion against the Packers. And so th- there's an argument to be made that moving on from Dan Quinn is in the best interest of this team, but they just don't seem interested in making that move themselves. They're kind of waiting for somebody to take him off their hands. Yeah, it's almost like a field goal kicker uh, that no matter what kind of a season he had, even if he had a decent season, uh, and he, but he misses the big kick. It doesn't have long ties. He's been there maybe a couple of years. It's almost like, well, you just can't bring him back. I mean, he just missed literally literally Brett Maher last year for the Cowboys. He had this remarkable regular season and then melted down in the playoffs. And everybody saw, and to your point, it was this question of like, man, he was awesome, but you just can't do it. Like he was so bad. You, you have to disconnect. And they did. Yeah. So we'll see what happens there with Quinn. Okay, so let's uh, – what's first? And I'm going to pop up on the screen, uh, first of all. Um, if uh, anybody out there, I'm sure if they're big fans, uh, they know uh, about some of these channels. But uh, for some of these websites, uh, you can use uh, Sport Rack or uh, Over the Cap. And um, this is Over the Cap here. So you got all the Dallas Cowboys players here under contract. And then 
uh, hitting free agency here. You take a look at some of the key guys that are available or who will be, of course, uh, unrestricted free agents. So we're going to go over a couple of those guys uh, as they pop up here. And in the meanwhile, uh, as, uh, as we wait for there it is, as we wait for it to pop up, there it is. It's not a big list, uh, especially uh, if you're just considering uh, not just the list itself, the entire list, but how many of those players are actually key players that they want back. And then, of course, rlads.com, the Dallas Cowboys, bet that best updated depth chart in the industry. And you can see it right here. This is the Cowboys. Uh, by the way, the uh, players there in orange, those are free agents. So that's offense, that's defense, and that's special teams and the reserves uh, that you can check out, of course, at rlads.com. Uh, so let's get into it. Let's start, first of all, with those unrestricted free agents and the free agent situation. I, and, and actually, let's start with cap casualties because there are a few players that, you know, making a few bucks. Um, but it looks like just on on, in, on paper that a couple of those guys just can't be moved at this point. So are, th- are there going to be any cap casualties that are not unrestricted free agents right now? I'd say the most likely one is probably Michael Gallup. Um, you know, that, that contract just hasn't really aged well for Dallas since they gave it to him uh, following the 2021 regular season. Uh, really just, you know, fell behind, um, you know, and he was coming back from a torn ACL, to be fair. I mean, it was a gamble of a deal, but um, has not really been all too involved. And obviously the Brandon Cooks played really well, CD is CD. Um, and so they could save nine and a half million dollars if they make him a post June 1st designation. Um, so obviously that that money wouldn't come in until then, but but that's the that's the lowest hanging fruit I think in terms of moves that they'll probably make along those lines. Okay, and then as we move along here, there might be some players as we go through the positions I'll I'll, I'll bring up. But um, let's just start with the, the UFAs. All right, Tony Pollard definitely be back. I would guess no. Um, oh. I mean, just because I mean, unless he's really willing to take some sort of team friendly deal, but he was obviously on the franchise tag and. He wasn't, you know, all too impressive. And again, kind of, you know, similar situation. He was coming off the injury. And so it was always unfair to have these, you know, high expectations of him. But they, they were in a position where they really had to bring him back last year. And the tag was the only way that made the most sense. And so it seems like they might stand to move on. And that might be the most beneficial. Yeah, it's very rare that a player gets tagged, plays the whole season and returns. It's just right. unless he gets tagged again. Uh, it just doesn't happen, uh, you know. And, you know, and there's a whole bunch of reasons why. Okay, um, what about uh, am I pronouncing his name right? Biadish. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Tyler, that's one of the the more interesting ones. Obviously, Cowboys starting center, and, and he has been so you know his entire rookie contract. Um, you know, he doesn't have the same household appeal that Tyron Smith and Zach Martin do in terms of Cowboys offensive line, but he's been a really important part of their overall operation. Um, and with it being such a critical year for them in obvious ways, you know, I don't know that you want to try to go at this thing with a brand new center. Um, that one's more of a coin flip to me. I mean, I, I do, I do think the money's probably going to have to be right for them, but that might be one they lose just because somebody else is willing to pay him. Yeah. Uh, Getting back to the cap now, obviously the Cowboys year in year out, they're, they're they don't they're in the negative when it comes to the cap situation. But we all we do understand that the NFL, which is why it's great, and I know maybe the players might want to rethink this, but we we hope they don't. It makes it a lot easier for teams again that it could be like the Cowboys, it could be whatever twenty million dollars of the cap on paper, but uh, they'll figure it out. They'll be able to make a few moves here, restructure there, do this there. And then they're fine. But it, what it does mean is that it, it just it does uh, ha- uh, uh, tie them away from being able to make the big splash, to make the, some of these big free agent moves. So is that where the Cowboys are right now? Do you think, yeah, OK, they might look like it, it's a bad situation, but um, they'll they'll be fine. The only thing is that they're just not going to be able to go out there and, and sign anybody that's going to be an impact player. I don't mean to go all over the place, but that's kind of the, you know, the, the real first decision that they have to make. Obviously, you know, they've decided to bring back Mike McCarthy, but it is a contract year for him. And so, you know, it stands to reason they could be looking for a new head coach in 2025. And they ha- they're going to have to make a decision on Dak Prescott. That is the, the real, that's the fork in the road for them. Um, you know, you get people who say things like cut him, trade him. Those things are not you know, serious. But even if you wanted to trade him, he has a no trade clause. So he can obviously, you know, control that. Uh, Dak is currently scheduled, not an unrestricted free agent, obviously, but uh, he's currently on the Cowboys salary cap for just about $60 million this year. 
which is just not a tenable situation for them. Um, so the only two options they have are to extend him and make him I, what I think we agree would probably be the highest paid player in the NFL at the time of him signing that deal, um, which you could certainly argue he, he has earned. And I don't think you'd have to argue very hard. I mean, he's second team all pro, uh, just had a career year. He's barely, you know, over 30. Um, but if you are going to be looking for a new head coach in 2025, it stands to reason that you wouldn't want that person to have to inherit Dak Prescott entering his 10th season in the NFL. And so it makes sense to want Dak on the same timeline as McCarthy for obvious reasons. And so they do obviously have to touch up his contract in some way, shape, or form. It currently has two void years on it. So they can restructure him. And if they really, you know, if they really want to go all in, so to speak, and it's such a tired expression, they could restructure him and create about $18, 19000000 million in salary cap space this season that would allow them to do all the things that you yeah. and I are kind of dancing around. And that would, that would be a, an approach of, we're, you know, look, we're all leaving for college tomorrow. Let's just have a great time and let's let's hope let's hope for the best. Let's hope we win the Super Bowl. And if we do, we figure it out. We figure out all these contractual situations. We pay a billion dollars out the pocket because we won the Super Bowl and nobody will care. Um, but it seems like that might be the approach that makes the most sense. It's just a matter of what they're going to decide to do. Yeah, and uh, and and you're obviously spot on. And every coach. Uh, slash GM, even I, I want my own quarterback. Right. I want to make this. And, and you know, and, and that, sorry, not to interrupt, That's but when Mike McCarthy took over, you know, Dak was a free agent to be. Now, he, they would tag him and obviously, you know, go at it again and, and ultimately give him the long-term deal. But, you know, he, he was on an expiring rookie contract. He was a much younger player. I, I do think it's one thing to say, hey, this is the franchise quarterback, but he's 25, 26 years old. It's a very different thing for a coach to walk into as opposed to this dude, at, you know, if we're fast-forwarding, is 31 years old. He's about to enter year number 10 in the NFL. So there's not a lot of precedent. There is some, but uh, for quarterbacks that late in their career experiencing serious success for the first time, Peyton Manning and Matt Ryan are the only two in terms of very recent history to reach the Super Bowl in their ninth season or later. Obviously, Peyton would go to four, um, but you know, Peyton Manning, this is not Peyton Manning. Um, Ken Anderson is the only other example, if you go all the way back to 1980, of somebody who made it. It took him till his 10th season in the NFL. So you're fighting that history. You're fighting your own history, the shadow that you live in that we just talked about and you would have then a rookie head coach or seemingly at least a first year head coach in 2025 which is why i think if you're a rational cowboys fan i think you believe in dak prescott you acknowledge he's earned a, a fair deal a market rate deal but the the timelines involved are now different his age is different and it just might be time to where they have to watch him move on elsewhere because what's in the best interest of this team's overall future is a total rebuild beginning in 2025. yeah so if you had a guess, then it sounds like the, the the reasonable approach is just let it play out for another year. Well, they can't I, let it play out to me is don't touch the deal, which I don't think they can. They can't let him be on the books for $60 million. So, that, so they True. would have to restructure him. But it would create if you think the Dallas Cowboys have been in your life a lot already as a non-Cowboys fan, if they go at. And for what it's worth, they went into 2019 with Jason Garrett and Dak Prescott, both in contract years. But I mean, I think you can imagine what the hysteria would be if they went into this, because if they restructure him as opposed to extending him, that is, I mean, I'm being a little dramatic now, but that's almost an outright declaration of we don't know if we want you on this team in 2025 and beyond. And so as soon as that becomes, you know, catnip or chum in the water for national shows and national media that is going to be a really exhausting storyline that percolates <laughs> That's true. really from from the moment they restructure until the end of next season yeah so either way though you're right i mean they have to do something uh, how how much of that contract or what exactly they do we, we won't be able to find out until the day comes and boom here's the deal here's the way it looks right. and then like you said then everybody's gonna start nitpicking and Oh, I see what they're doing. Okay. Uh, but, and but go ahead. One, once they make a decision, all the, I think the evaluation of all these other things becomes something you can start to approach because if they do one of these things and all of a sudden, you know, maybe Tyrant Smith's an unrestricted free agent for their Cowboys. Maybe it is a matter of like, okay, we are really hoping against a lot of odds that 2024 is the year and it's going to be very difficult to find a new left tackle. So let's bring Tyron back for on, on a one-year deal. And let's let's just hope again, we're we're trying to put all of our eggs in this basket, so to speak. Maybe we do bring Tyler Biotis back 
Or, you know, if they choose to sign Dak Prescott to an extension, maybe they're more willing to let Tyron Smith walk. And obviously because they know Dak Prescott's a part of the future. Again, the, the fork in the road that they decide to take here will indi indicate, I think, their approach to how they want to handle certain players. Not all of them are the same, obviously, uh, but it would require different lines of thinking, I think, to bring back Tyron or not bring back Tyron or whatever the case may be. And like you said, uh, that first domino has to fall and has Dak, and then we'll have a, a much better idea of uh, how it's all going to work out. So, um, and you mentioned Tyron. So what is he? So he's uh, 34, as you mentioned. So uh, maybe there is one more year left uh, that they can bring him back. On the flip side, Gilmore is also 34. Uh, boy, that sure snuck up on us. I never thought he was 34 years old until I saw it. I was like, damn, I didn't realize that old. But there's some key guys, uh, starters on defense that are unrestricted free agents. So um, who, which of the players do you think that they definitely should and maybe want to bring back? I think, you know, on some level, they're going to need some kind of veteran leadership. So I, I could totally see them wanting Stefan Gilmore back. They, they never really got to see things with Stefan Gilmore and Trayvon Diggs, obviously, because Trayvon was hurt so early in the season. Yep. And then Deron Bland emerged and, and kind of changed everything. But, you know, Stefan could, could allow them. Deron Bland just finished his second season in the NFL. So you get one more year out of Gilmore, and, and all of a sudden you get to 2025, and you can do a long-term deal with Bland, and, and you have him to pair with Diggs for the foreseeable future. So I, I think they definitely want him back. And again, he's kind of the right, you know, tour that you know this really young locker room needs. I, I think Tyron makes sense to bring back, um, just because if if you don't let, bring him back, are you are you kicking Tyler Smith out to left tackle? Are you satisfied with Tyler Smith at left guard? Because then. That becomes, you know, priority need number one and one A for you, not just in the draft, but potentially in free agency as well. Um, they, you know, they don't really have any linebackers in general, um, which is why that position is kind of top of need. Jaron Curse has played a lot of, you could call a linebacker for them. That's the way Dan Quinn likes to utilize those safeties. Um, I think that they let him walk. That's probably the most emotional disconnect they make this season or this off season. Excuse me. He's been so great. I mean, he landed when Dan Quinn did. Uh, but the Cowboys at training camp last year extended Malik Hooker right after they'd given Donovan Wilson a big extension earlier in the offseason. They drafted DeMarvion Overshone. They're kind of set at that position. And so they probably in all likelihood let Curse walk. Okay. And then um, Lewis as well. Is, now, is that a, a big decision? Or, I mean, is he is he somebody that they can let go? I mean, he's not going to cost a lot of money at this point in his career, correct? Correct. And, and he played so well. Um, you know, he was somebody who a lot of people wanted to cut, I'd say, around training camp. And it, this sounds stupid, but because he wears number two and everybody was really obsessed with Deuce Vaughn at the time and everybody wanted to give it to him. And so it's just get rid of him and, uh, and, let, and, and let Deuce... Uh, Deuce for number two, but um, but the the Trayvon Davis injury forced Deron Bland to kick outside. They were you know, planning on him playing mostly nickel throughout the season, and, okay. and obviously he thrived and flourished. And that promoted Jordan, obviously you know full time slot nickel duties. And and he was this was maybe the best season that Jordan Lewis has ever had as a member of the Dallas Cowboys. But you know he's a little bit older. I do think it would be irresponsible to bet on that. Um, you know, he's a great player who's given a lot to the team that, you know, the business side of things probably lends you to believe it's it's best to move on from. I wouldn't be shocked if they do move on if he winds up with the Chargers now, follows Jim Harbaugh. He's a Michigan man through and through. Um, you know, that would make some sense. Um, he could still play, but I just wouldn't want it to be off of my dollar. Okay. And what about the so that defensive line? So uh, Armstrong, so we already had his contract voided. Uh, Fowler. And then inside Gallimore and Hankins. So um, they get a, Armstrong, obviously, is the most, you know, the youngest and most talented. So they're going to try to bring him back? I think probably not. I mean, obviously, you've got, a, you know, Michael Parsons and Marcus Lawrence, you know, one of the better edge rushing duos in the NFL. They spent a second round draft pick now two drafts ago on Sam Williams. And it's, it's just been so difficult to find, you know, defensive snaps for him. He played some special teams this past year and had some horrible penalties there. But um, it feels like they've kind of been waiting for this moment to, to allow him some more opportunities to thrive. Okay. Yeah, you know, they've had great players. You know, Dante Fowler was somebody who I didn't believe in when they brought him in, but but he found a nice, you know, little role there throughout the rotation. But I do think it's just time to, you know, recycle those roles and find some other veterans that can potentially be one-year deals or whatever um, to take their spots. And so 
Alamore is somebody who it felt like they wanted to move on from at training camp last year, but they kept him around. So he probably feels like he's got one foot out the door. Hankins has been somebody who's really shorted up their run defense, but they did draft Mozzie Smith last year in the first round. Now that didn't work out. Um, but I think in in their, you know, ideal world, it's Mozzie Smith who is filling that role and filling that need, and Jonathan Hankins probably walks. Yeah, uh, it's way too early, of course, to give up on Mozzie. Uh, sometimes every player develops at a different pace. So because it looks like now that is a very promising interior uh, because uh, uh, you, you, the UCLA kid, right? He went to UCLA, I believe. Oh, he, he's doing, yeah. Yeah, I'll let you say his name. Uh, he really has just developed nicely uh, each season. And uh, if, if Mozzie Smith starts to develop as well, they're set in the interior for some time now. Yeah, you know, Osa had a great season, but it was just overshadowed by Micah because, I mean, for obvious yeah. reasons. And um, it's, you know, they've had a lot of bodies there, but Osa had a, probably his best season as a pro this past year as well. And you're right. Um, that offers them an option. And, you know, you know, we live in a really versatile NFL world where it's, I wouldn't say positionless, you know, front sevens, but I mean, DeMarcus Lawrence lines up over the center half the time. Micah Parsons lines up there sometimes. And so um, the Cowboys do get a little bit creative, uh, but, you know, I, I do envision their kind of top two, you know, defensive tackles, so to speak, to being Odigi Zua and Mozzie Smith, presuming Mozzie makes the proper jump. And a uh, first round draft pick, he better. That's uh, that's that's very important. Okay, so uh, I should ask you uh, offensively, and we just talked about Prescott, but why not Trey Lance? I know nobody's really. It's hard to evaluate a, th- a third stringer. He doesn't get a lot of time during the season, but is there still a hope in, in on this team that he could be part of the future? I mean, that's that's it's all about the situation, you know. As a first round draft pick in, in twenty twenty one, the Cowboys have to decide if they want to pick up Trey Lance's fifth year option yeah, this offseason. Yeah. And so, um, and it's something it's probably somewhere around twenty five ish million dollars. And so, you know, if they don't touch Dak Prescott's contract for whatever reason, I mean, all of a sudden now you're you're just paying all sorts of money to you know two quarterbacks on your roster. And so. I think in all likelihood, they declined the fifth year option. They obviously traded for him to, to have around. Um, he's probably a little bit too long in the tooth, but I, I wouldn't wonder if they try to get him involved in some of their OTAs, you know, how sometimes teams get, um, you know, just kind of passes for players who are, you know, still young and maybe missed a season due to an injury or something like that. It's always been about development. I don't know if they would try to flip him, you know, maybe he, he still does carry enough, you know, kind of wonder from somebody if, if you had somebody get hurt in training camp. but. Um, the timeline, and that was the conversation at the time when they traded for him. That was what was so weird about it was you knew the contractual situation that was, you know, showing up in the spring of 24. Here we are, here it is. Um, so you're going to have to make a decision. They spent the fourth round draft pick on him, and that's obviously not a, a day two pick, but that's significant. And now they don't have that and they have their backup quarterback. But I mean, we have no idea what he is, or who he is, or how he is, or anything like that. It's a true and total question mark right now. Okay, um, so now it looks like chances are the team's going to need a, a running back. Um, even even if Vaughn winds up getting carries uh, this year, because Dowdle, does he just come back on a cheap? And are they going to try and find, let's say Pollard's gone, are they going to try and find a running back with a little size? It, or is that just, nope, that's the way we want to play our offense. We want little guys. We want speed quick in the backfield. As Or, or do you think, yeah, it, it, we, we just haven't found the right between the tackles, physical kind of running back yet? I think it really depends, again, on, on kind of how they view 2024. If it is an all-in approach, if, if they do extend Dak. And, and I don't mean to just, you know, lean on that like that, you know, answers everything right now. But, you know, if they decide to go all-in, if they decide to restructure Dak, whatever the case may be, Maybe all of a sudden you know, you're more willing to entertain conversations for thing around things like Derek Edmund or Tate Barkley or whatever the case may be because you are all in and you need help, you need bodies you you need to kind of and again 
th these are kind of silly ideas, but you know, I think those are more tenable ideas if that's the approach the Cowboys take. If they decide to extend Dak Prescott, I think there's a lot of logic in that. Then I could totally see them saying, "Hey, you know what, Rico, you want to come back? That's fine. We got Deuce. We have." you know, a platoon of sorts. We're, we're not in the business of paying anybody, you know, north of $8 million per year at a, you know, the devalued position. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, tight end sure has worked out. I'm not sure how many people thought Ferguson was going to take that type of, of step up, but he did. And Schoonmaker injury uh, rookie season. So it is what it is, but I'm sure he still has a bright future. So team seems to be set at tight end, correct? Yeah. I mean, Jake Ferguson, really you know took a step and i think took a leap in in the second season and you're right they've got schoonmaker um you know they, who they spent a the second round draft pick on and, and i see the you know michigan end behind you but that was that's probably the pick the cowboys fans hated the most um it's just never it, you, it's really hard to point to a moment you know where he he made a positive impact on the team this season and sure. you could certainly argue that there may have been ways to, to utilize that selection especially you know with the hindsight of, of jake ferguson stepping yeah. up evolving the way that he did all right and wide receiver you mentioned gallup uh cooks is there so lamb is a true number one uh tolbert isn't it time for tolbert to kind of maybe step into gallup's reps and and be that number three guy uh but no matter what do you think that they're going to be on the market for a, a true like number two or do you think that no even if they let gallup go it'll be lamb cooks and tolbert and then they'll just try to fill the rest of the guys you know uh accordingly I think they should be. And I think, you know, it depends on the market. And again, depends on what kind of disposition they're carrying and the, into the, you know, kind of roster building part of the year. Um, you know, is, is, are they, do they want a Mike Evans sort of option? You know, want to bring Mike Evans back to Texas one year deal? Let's kind of do this. Everybody get involved. I would bet anything I own um, that they will be, from a rumor standpoint, connected to Stefan Diggs. Obviously, the Bills season, you know, was dramatic, um, particularly, you know, involving Diggs. Um, when I interviewed Trayvon last year in the week leading up to the Super Bowl, he very, very openly said, we've got to get bro to Dallas. He challenged our audience. He said, everybody tweet, get Stephon <laughs> to Dallas. Um, I mean, they, and, and, you know, they really want to play together. And the fact that Trayvon is the more recent one to sign a long-term deal suggests, obviously, that it, if it were to happen in the immediate future, it would be with the Cowboys. Um, and plus, Stephon connecting himself to the Cowboys is only good for, for Stephon Diggs in the individual sense and so i would bet a lot that we will see some sort of rumor about them wanting to play together um i, I understand it's not a real feasible thing yeah. for the bills to move on from from stefan um but you know it's it, that's always been a weird situation and so um again it if you allow yourself to believe the Cowboys go all in in the most imaginative way possible, I mean, anything is possible. I mean, they are really embarrassed with the way last season ended. And I don't say that to say, man, watch out. This is really going to happen. But um, this is either going to be the most fun offseason ever with them just trying to dress this up in an incredible way or the most chaotic in that everybody hates them and everything they do gets destroyed on the Internet sort of way. Okay. Uh, so uh, we talked a little bit already about the offensive line and really that it looks like that the tackle position, of course, you got age and you also have just talent, but, uh, they, they've got to start replenishing the, the tackle spots. And, 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 and of course they have to sign their center too, but th this becomes a, a pretty big, important position on the team heading into the off season. Yeah. And it does depend on what they want to do with Tyler Smith. And that's a, a decision that is probably independent of Dak Prescott. Okay. Um, Tyler obviously played left tackle for a majority of his rookie season, but the plan was always for him to play left guard and Tyron got hurt and et cetera, et cetera. So um, there's an argument to be made that Tyler Smith is just an amazing left guard and you should leave him there. Um, and you figure out the plan of left tackle and, you know, maybe it is Tyrant for one more year while you continue to look and continue to search. But if you want to kick him out to left tackle because of the value that the position holds, that makes sense as well. And it's probably easier to find some sort of interior option, whether it's through free agency or some of the younger players on their roster. Although that's more difficult if they do have a new center in play as well. But uh, but that that switch has to be flipped one way or another. Whatever they want to do with Tyler Smith is kind of the true answer for how aggressive they're going to be in terms of what they're going to look for from a replenishment standpoint. Yeah, because if they do resign both linemen, that gives them 
another year but that means well this is a good year to kind of start that you want you don't want to be playing rookies so therefore if you can draft some linemen this season to get them ready for next season that would be def- that would be something that they would probably look at and uh give me a position uh guard tackle what's more important i mean philosophically tackle but um as it relates to the cowboys I mean, probably tackle. I mean, they, they really okay. don't have a, a, a swing tackle on their team that you feel comfortable about. Um, and so unless you consider the swing tackle option to be Tyler kicking out, you know, if Tyron is on the team. I mean, you know, gone are the days. I think a lot of people still think of the Cowboys the way they did circa 2016. And yeah. they think this is the best offensive line in the NFL. <laughs> yeah, it is not. It, it is a, a revolving door, a rotation. It's a game of musical chairs in a lot of senses. All right. Uh, defensively, then. Uh, we already talked about a few of these spots. Now you mentioned linebacker, so uh, so overshown. W- what's the status there? I mean, I think they obviously hope to get him back for for all offseason activities, but you know, he's never technically played in the NFL outside of the preseason, and he was he was awesome. I mean, he really looked like he was going to be a contributor from day one, and it's really unfortunate that he was hurt. And so, I think the hope is obviously that he'll contribute, but I do think relying on him would would be irresponsible. I mean, a big reason why the Cowboys were bounced the way and, and, and when they were um, was because of a lack of, of real beef at, at the middle, in the middle of their defense. I mean, you know, they played Marquise Bell and that was great, but I mean, the dude weighs like 205 pounds. I mean, you know, you just, you can't have that happening with tight ends blocking you each and every single play. You're going to get pushed around and, and that's what happened. So um, I'm not advocating for, um, you know, premium assets to be utilized on off ball linebackers by any stretch, but that's just kind of where they're at. I mean, they, they need some some serious force in the middle of their defense because if not, they're going to get pushed around the exact same way. All right. Well, that definitely sounds like something important there. Uh, so then back in the secondary, we talked about a few of those guys. Other than that, just getting Diggs back healthy. Um, and, uh, you know, Wilson and Hooker seem like they're pretty good there. But you also, of course, if you lose Curse, that becomes um, a hole. And, and, would you, and, and if Lewis is gone... That's another hole. So if they lose Curse and Lewis, and it sounds like to me that's a, that's a from what you're saying, it's a definite uh, uh, probability. Um, adding a couple of more, especially with Gilmore's age, adding at least one, if not two more DBs is going to be important. Yeah, and I think they might throw some other, you know, their day three picks there and, and help to kind of, you know, develop some players along the way and hope that everything kind of holds at the top. Uh, you know, you can only have so many players that you feel really great about. And um, they have some some interesting options. They still have Izzy Mukwamu, who was a draft pick a couple of years ago. That's, an, you know, he's played safety and some nickel corner for them. So he's kind of that new versatile player. And I think inherits a lot of opportunities if Jaron Curse does leave in free agency. Okay. Um, so they've got some stuff in the cupboard, but you're right. I mean, you, you can never have enough ultimately. All right. And then up front, uh, so we've already talked about a few of those guys there, but anytime you run uh, a four, three, or, or you're basically relying on your defensive linemen, especially outside, you can never have enough edge rushers. You can never have enough of those guys. Um, so that, 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 that's definitely something, of course, especially if Armstrong leaves, but, um, what about, what about the run defense? What about, and we talked about, it seems like Smith, hopefully he'll take that next step. But between the linebackers and the linemen, that's kind of what you've already talked about. They they they, they can't get pushed around. Um, if they did bring in a defensive lineman, though, is it what would you say is the biggest need? Even though we 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 think that they wouldn't spend another early round pick or at least a first round or on a tackle, but do you think that they would spend an early round draft pick on an edge rusher? Probably not an early round draft pick again because okay. I just. You know, I can't see them, you know, devoting premium assets and free agency to the linebacker position. So they might attack that in the draft. But um, but I, I do certainly think that they'll they'll find a new Dante Fowler. You know, they'll find a new kind yeah, of fifth easy. man, a new sixth man kind of thing. Um, that's that's what they go at. I mean, it might not be until the third week of free agency, but, um, you know, you're the, the way Clowney kind of hangs out in free agency year in and year out. And if, if the Ravens win the Super Bowl, I could, you know, things like that. Like you yeah. can kind of see something like that materializing. Um, but um, but, you know, I, I do think that they feel set with Micah and, and Demarcus Lawrence and then Sam Williams, obviously, with a larger role with Doran Thompson out of the fold. Um, 
let's go over some of these rookies then. We, we've already talked about a couple of them. So uh, how did – I mean, I, I don't know. What, what do you think the team fe- feels about some of these guys? Uh, Fajoko. I mean, really not a factor much of the season. Um, the, the rookie class in general was just kind of an abject failure. Um, you know, the, the most impressive rookie was the undrafted kicker who – you know, as we all know from every broadcast, went to Notre Dame, played soccer, was an MLS draft pick, et cetera, et cetera. We've heard that story a thousand times. Um, other than that, I mean, it was it was kind of miss after miss after miss. And that's a little unfair because it did seem like DeMar John Overshone was, was going to have a sizable impact when he got hurt. And that's just kind of the way it goes. But, you know, Deuce Vaughn had all the attention, was inactive, you know, for most of the serious portion of the season. Um, yeah, Luke Schoonmaker, you know, Technically, he had some nice moments, but more than anything, you know, his, his top moment of his rookie season was being half an inch short in Philadelphia on the goal line. And so, um, you know, I think people tend to trust the Cowboys scouting department and their overall draft process. And there's a lot of reason in order to do that or that they've earned uh, for people to do that. But they're coming off of a pretty kind of, you know, tough season as far as their own individual performance is concerned. And I was kind of surprised myself, and we talked about this. Uh, I actually thought they had a pretty good draft overall, and and maybe they still will because a couple of these guys are banged up. So there's still room. And again, Smith, it's just way too early for us to judge what this uh, rookie class is going to look like. But obviously, uh, in the first year, it just didn't help him at all, Um, and that has to change. Uh, Okay, so even some of the later guys like Scott or Brooks really didn't hear anything about these guys. So. Is, is there yeah, somebody? Was... No, I mean, I I hate to just be super negative, but, you know, all the major moments they had, I mean, they traded up for Eric Scott. That was kind of weird. And they costed themselves a fifth round pick in the process. Um, and he, he had some like, you know, first team corner snaps, you know, at rookie mini camp and stuff. And you got a little bit excited, but never really broke into the fold. Um, Jalen Brooks is a, a fun option. Um, but you know, I don't know that you're counting on a second year, seventh round wide receiver to really make a sizable impact. His, his kind of biggest moment was a, a ball that was tipped off his hands that Jalen Tolbert caught. I mean, that, that really was, was all he kind of did this season and you know, he didn't have a lot of opportunities or anything like sure. that, but, um, it just, you know, comp- especially compared to 2022 when the Cowboys had Tyler Smith and, you know, Sam Williams, obviously, and, you know, Deron Bland, I mean, they, they got so much production right away, um, uh, that this class again compared to that one specifically was a a pretty big win all right a few more things before i let you go you just mentioned somebody that i brought up a little while ago and that's jalen tolbert um do you think that he's capable now of breaking out i think you know if if michael gallup is gone i think he'll see a lot more opportunities and, and so the floor might rise just because the volume does um he had a horrible rookie season i mean just really horrible and people were really down on him after that um he he had the same Kadarius tony you know offsides penalty that you know took the nfl world by storm when the cowboys lost at lambeau field in 2022 um and really kind of earned the trust of everyone back throughout the off season and training camp and and didn't have a huge statistical season but had some really important moments um you know brandon cooks missed some time early in the season and you know, he drew some, a couple of big penalties, things like that, like things that just really kind of exemplified a a different understanding of the game. Um, And so I do think he's probably earned the opportunity from them to to prove it, to prove that he can handle a a larger shared workload. Um, And it doesn't hurt to be in an offense with CD line and Brandon cooks, but, um, but you're betting on that. And and if you do decide that it is an all in sort of season, I mean, do you, do you want to be that committed to Jalen Tolbert? You know, that's that's kind of what you have to ultimately ask yourself. Or do you want to sign Mike Evans? Do you want to sign DeAndre Hopkins or whatever the case may be? I mean, you can go a number of different directions with it. It's just a matter of, you know, how how hot everything is on you, given the circumstances of the Cowboys. Yeah, I actually have Tolbert on my uh, on my dynasty team. He's like one of those stashed yeah. players. I stashed him. Uh, I'm so with I- you. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, he's just he's Justin Ross. That's really all he is right now from a dynasty standpoint. So I'm with you. Okay. Uh, by the way, CD Lamb does he? What's his contract situation? Is he going to have to get? Is, is he going to get to wait another year? Because uh, isn't the clock ticking there? Yeah. So he just finished his fourth season and obviously is now entering the option year that they picked up last year. 
Um, you know, it would have, you know, we argued at the time a year ago that they should have done the extension then, and they did not. Um, and then he had literally the greatest statistical season that any player in Dallas Cowboys wide receiver history ever has. And so that sucks uh, for the Cowboys. Uh, but it's great news for CD. I mean, he's probably going to get somewhere north of $30 million per year. They're going to have to pay him. Um, and they could establish some salary cap relief by doing that as well in, in massage his cap number for this year, obviously. Um, and the sooner they do that, obviously, the better, because we now live in a world where Justin Jefferson's likely going to get his deal and Jamar Chase and, you know, oh, yeah. Devontae Smith. I mean, like, you can go on and on and on and on and on. And the Cowboys have generally dragged their feet on things like this and wound up paying more in the process. And so it, it would be a disaster if the Cowboys did not get a deal done with CD and also had him going into a contract year on top of maybe that Prescott alongside Mike McCarthy. True. And then uh, Asim Richards, the rookie, again, another rookie. Is the, is there still hope that he replaces Zach Martin long term? I don't know about that. I mean, obviously, that's, that's, a, that's a big ask. But, I mean, you know, he, he's somebody who I think is going to be competing for snaps when they get to training camp. So, you know, you always have those kind of down the roster interior players. Um, and if they have a need, if, if they do kick Tyler Smith out to tackle and, and they need a, you know, somebody to be their new left guard, I think he would be a candidate for that. Okay. Um, but, but, you know, not much was asked of him throughout his rookie season. And um, this is going to be a big offseason for him, obviously, in terms of development and growth and proving that he can be an NFL offensive line. All right, RJ. So um, if you had to give uh, top three needs, then uh, final question regarding – uh, what uh, what what the Cowboys are going to be looking at? I know it's uh, you know kind of hard at this point. That's why we're talking. It's early, 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 uh, because we'll, we really won't know a lot of this until the Dak Prescott situation is taken care of. But just right now, if you had to guess, uh, what would be like the top three needs going into the off season? I'd say linebacker is number one for me, um, and I'd say tackle. Even if Tyron does come back, it's I find it interesting that both Daniel Jeremiah and, and Mel Kuyper had tackle as their you know the positions they mocked to the Cowboys in, in their first mocks of the offseason. I mean, you know, a lot changes obviously between mocks in January and mocks in April, but you know, initially it, it seems like every direction is pointing them the same way for the Cowboys. So I'd go linebacker, tackle, and I I mean, you know. I might go, I might split the difference and, and lean wide receiver over corner, but I could make that argument either way, uh, just because you need so many in today's NFL. Sure. Um, and if, and if you know, you, Brandon Cooks was awesome in 2023, but you're not guaranteed to get that. I mean, you, you really, the Cowboys really benefited from having a, a Robin to their Batman throughout this past season. And, and you don't want to lose that quality. So you need somebody who can obviously continue to help things out because CD lamb while amazing is ultimately still just one option for you in the past. Season. Absolutely. And, uh, it just it, it's going to be a lot going on. Like you said, it could be a very entertaining off season uh, for the Dallas Cowboys. That's good for you. It's good for business. Uh, you've got the blog and the boys YouTube channel. So we'll have a link in the description of this video for anybody who wants to check that out. How often are you on, uh, on the channel? You know, I'd say uh, right now, every other day, we got some coming out. Um, obviously, not the same pace as during the regular season, but uh, but that changes. You know, as, as free agency happens, you know, as oh, yeah. draft or whatever. There's there's heavier times of the year, but um, you know, we're dumb enough to have made this our, our obsession, and in my case, uh, my living um, to assign all of our hopes, dreams, wants, and wishes to the Dallas Cowboys. It's a it's a bold decision, but somebody had to. Oh yeah, it's really tough. I know it's uh, it is what it is. But like you said, somebody has to do it. So, all right, RJ. Well, you do a great job of it. We appreciate it, and uh, we definitely look forward to talking to you again at least sometime between now and the draft. For sure. Thanks so much for having me, Greg.